Rodney, thanks for joining us. Uh, first of all, congratulations on your nominee for Walter Payton Man of the Year. I saw a video. Tell me about the video, the official announcement from Jeffrey Lurie where you were pranked. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, quite a surprise. Uh, I, I thought I was doing something for voter registration and next thing you know Mr. Lurie pops up and you know everything is done virtually now so I'm thinking maybe he's in another room doing an interview something happened the cameraman switched over to the wrong uh, room and then next thing you know he's uh, telling me uh, I'm the nominee for the team and I was excited to get the news I was very surprised it was a good feeling you know for the team to select me and represent the team the right way and, and because of my work that i've done throughout my time here in philadelphia so uh, it was rewarding and uh, I'm, I'm thankful let's talk about a little bit of your work in philadelphia game changes that's an initiative that's probably going to touch 10,000 youth or more in the philadelphia area what was your inspiration there and what's the end game for game changers yeah, I think when you think of game changers, you think of someone who's a difference maker. And that's who we're trying to identify, those individuals, particularly uh, students who want to see change uh, within their community, or maybe they just have an idea and, and we're there to now help them manifest that idea and bring it to life. We have uh, have three initiatives, a part of Game Changers. There's the 60 Seconds of Change videos where students are able to express where they want to see change in their community, whether it's gun violence, whether it's uh, education equality, racism, uh, police reform, uh, mental health. And then also uh, we've expanded that and going to touch on black history. Um, 2020 has really opened the eyes of a lot of us and, and, and where we need to be more informed. So that's why that piece was important. And then we also want, uh, you know, to create more opportunities for a lot of these uh, uh, minority uh, kids, particularly in digital media, uh, knowing that that's very popular now. And so we're creating internship opportunities for them to, to better them. We're aiming to touch uh, a lot of kids in the Philadelphia region. And hopefully this uh, just becomes kind of the, the model uh, and, and we can take this across the nation. Man, that's awesome. And I would also like to commend you and your wife, Erica, on the work that you did on voter day, on voter registration day. Election day, you guys were out in full force uh, making things happen. And you made a comment that you want that to be your legacy. When most guys are thinking about football, you talked about that being your legacy. Why? You know, people will appreciate you more uh, for what you do uh, beyond the field um, because that's something that will forever touch the community. I mean, you know, football is, is not for long, man. And, and, and doing something like that, knowing that we played a role in such a impactful election just felt encouraging. But we were out there, like I said, just doing something uh, good for uh, the community. Most importantly, encouraging like our people to get out there and vote. Uh, in 2016, that you know the numbers show that you know the black community uh, did not have a good turnout in that election, and we wanted to flip the script. We wanted to make sure that we got out in those streets. Uh, we, we focused on voter registration and then we focused on the day of and getting people out to the polls. And I think it was effective, um, but I'm appreciative of everybody that participated because it couldn't be done without the teammates who all contributed and helped out that day. You got a lot going on, man. I know you're part of Big Brothers, Big Sisters. You've got a little and Isaiah. Tell me a little bit about Isaiah. He's a Simon Gratz kid, right? And a little bit about um, just being a big. Man, being a big uh, is huge. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm already a, a big brother to uh, five of my siblings uh, growing up. I was always, you know, considered the role model and had to live up to those expectations and being the oldest. So when I came in counter with uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters, I thought it was important uh, for men like myself to get involved, to help out a lot of these children like Isaiah, who uh, have a strong mother at home and a strong parent, but the father or someone is missing in their life, uh, just to be there uh, as a support system, as, as, a, as a listener, on um, someone who can help you know guide them in the right direction. And then, like I said, be a, a positive role model that they can kind of look after. And so he's in good hands with his mom. And, and like I said, I help out when, when needed.
Good stuff, man. Um, I guess we got to talk a little bit of football. So, and the, and the conversation or the topic du jour, quarterback Jalen Hurts. So he's prepared the defense each and every week for the opposing quarterback and that offense. From that, what have you seen from him and what can we expect? Yeah, I think from Jalen, you see a guy who has improved every single week, who you know, takes advantage of his opportunities, uh, whether it's on scout or whether it's versus some of the competitive periods that he gets a chance to get behind center and go against the ones. And so I've continued to see growth, and that's what you want to see. I see a competitor. I see a guy who's humble enough to listen to others, who loves the game and you saw that on display last week as he came in man he's a very passionate guy man a few words but the game means a lot to him uh, and i'm excited for him to get his opportunity this upcoming week i think me as a on the defensive side we have to do our part to help him out as much as possible uh, it won't be easy for him but uh, i know he's up for the challenge and uh, he'll be well prepared come sunday not going to be easy for the defense either. You're facing a team that's won nine straight. They're in the top five in scoring. They're averaging almost 29 points per game. How do you slow down a train that's moving that fast? You know, for a team like New Orleans, man, it, it all starts with the run. Taysom Hill is their quarterback. They have Kamara. They have Murray. So I think they have a lot of tails, though. That will be very key for us is understanding who's in the game and what they like to do with those players when they're in them. And then just make them one dimensional and give ourselves a good chance. Uh, I think we talk about that all the time, but even more so on Sunday, uh, it's going to start up front. Uh, we're going to have to tackle well. And then when we get our opportunities, when they pass the ball, we have to make them count.